Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and look what I have in front of me. This is the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus, and this is my official review. Are you ready? Go. Ah, welcome back. Well, it's it's been a long time coming. I've had this GMAX 1.5 XT Plus for quite some time. In fact, I filmed an unboxing video for this, and it's one of the more popular unboxing videos on my channel. And unlike other printer reviews, this is interesting, right? Because I've had this for months. I've had this for months and printed all sorts of wonderful, wonderful things. It's really weird because most printer reviews, as you know, sit on this table, and on this table are the models that fit with it. However, with the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus and its gigantic build volume, it gets a table all itself. And all of these models over here occupy the other table. I still need a bigger table, don't I? The GMAX 1.5 XT Plus is a gigantic printer with a 400 by 400 by 531 millimeter build volume. In US terms, that's 16 inches by 16 inches by 21 inches tall. The nozzle on the extruder right up front here is a genuine 0.5 millimeter J head. The electronics box is back here. It's got an all metal case around the LCD electronics and something brand new just being announced I hear later today. That thing is right here. This is the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus heated build plate. It is 16 inches by 16 inches of up to 100 degrees centigrade heated build plate awesomeness. In fact, the control box is right here, and what's interesting about this heated build plate is this switch right here. And this switch allows you to turn on one of two zones. There are two zones on this heated build plate. The middle 8x8 eight eight square is zone 1, and the 16x16 16 16 inch <laughs> square is zone 2. So if you have a model, and you're printing it and it requires a heated build plate and you just need the smaller area in the middle, you can turn off the outer area and save yourself quite a bit of energy. In my tests, the eight by eight area on the build plate consumes 250 some odd watts of power, whereas the full gun 16 by 16 build plate heating up consumes roughly 870 watts of power. It's a lot, but if you need that large of a build volume with a heated build plate, this is where you're gonna get it. Well, just like with any of my printer reviews, I'm, I'm gonna do three things. I'm gonna tell you about this printer and show you what it's printed. I'm gonna tell you things I really like about this printer, and I'm gonna tell you things I don't like about this printer or things that I think could use improvement. I mean, at the end, I'll give you an overall impression, but. That's how we're gonna go about this review today. Well, let's start with step one, telling you about the printer and showing you what it's printed. The printer itself uses any G code that you've sliced using Simplify 3D, Cura, Matter Control, or whatever your favorite slicer is. Put the G code on an SD card or run tethered. When you put it on an SD card, the SD card goes in the slot right here, and then using the LCD and the knob, You'll twist and turn until you find print, and then you'll scroll through the SD card to your model, and you'll push in to activate. When you do that, that starts the printer along its process. You'll see the screen show the nozzle heating up. Once the nozzle is done heating up, it will begin the automatic bed leveling procedure using the BL Touch. The BL Touch is going to probe three different spots in three different rows for a total of nine to get a layout of the bed so that it can print evenly across it in case there's any bumps along the way. Also, don't forget with the XT Plus, you've got this wonderful heated bed. The controller is a separate controller and does not interface with the printer itself. The controller is easy to use. You plug it in, 
you hit the set button and then up arrows to get to a temperature. And once you get to that temperature, you hit set again and it starts heating the build plate. In my tests, I've been using ColorFab XT and I found that if I heat the build plate and the nozzle at the same time, the heated build plate will get to 75 degrees centigrade at or a little bit before the nozzle getting to 230 degrees centigrade. I really like that performance in that build plate because I've had printers in the past where heating the build plate up to ABS temperatures or just sub ABS temperatures took a long, long time. This does not take a long, long time. And thankfully, it doesn't take a long, long time on a giant print surface. Well, this is the part I would kind of show you how I printed some of these things, but all of these models I've filmed with time-lapse settings on a GoPro and I've produced videos for them on my channel and you've, you've liked and commented on all of these videos. So right now, I'm just gonna run through a couple quick time-lapses to remind you just how large and how awesome these prints really are. Without further ado, time-lapse. Boy, those time lapses sure are fun. I really enjoy printing on this thing, if you can't tell. And some of those models are, are just huge. And what makes this large build volume so much fun is that you can make things that are extraordinarily large. You can also print things that are small. How small? Well, how about this small? See this tiny, tiny little guy right here? This is a Ninja Flex Robber Rex, and I printed him on the G-Max 1.5 XT Plus. He's plenty detailed. You should be seeing a close-up right now, I hope. And you can see him, Rawr. He's a good little guy. I've also printed this jet using NinjaFlex. And as an example of something smaller you can print, and being at NinjaFlex, you can fold it up and, and it unfolds right there. Well, let's move on to the things that I really like about this printer. I'm gonna start off with the frame. This is genuine 8020 extrusion and it's built like a tank. It, it's hard to lift because it's so heavy. It doesn't wanna move, <laughs> I promise. And there is, there is no way this thing is, is coming apart. In fact, here's what's really interesting. Since I got it to the time right now, the only maintenance I've done to it is add on this heated build plate. I've tightened nothing on this machine. Everything is still rock solid and very, very tight. It is, it's a great machine with regard to the build quality. Another thing I like is this J head. I know it's 0.5 millimeters and a lot of people use 0.4 millimeter nozzles, but the J head really performs well. I can set exact temperatures and it's very consistent in how it extrudes filament. I know I haven't had this build plate for long, less than a week, but I've made some great prints on this and I find it very, very cool. On the surface, you see this brand new 16 inch by 16 inch sheet of genuine build tack material. There's a grid laid out inch by inch to give you an idea of how big things are when you're printing with them. Below that is a four millimeter thick piece of borosilicate glass. Under that is the heater pad for the two zone heating system. Below that is an all metal carriage to hold this and move it back and forth on the Y axis. And below that are the wheels that let this roll along the Y axis. There are some adjustable settings for the wheels that you can hit with a wrench and you can get your, your bed adjusted which way you want. We do have, like I said, auto bed leveling on this system and you really don't have to mess with that much. But if there is ever a time where you need to, it is available and the bed is not bolted to the system, it allows for adjustment. I was always under the impression that I could get by with lots of PLA plastics and not have to worry about a build plate that was heated ever again. But now I, I've been playing with ColorFab NGen and ColorFab XT 
and these materials are wonderful. I would never had the chance to print with these before because I didn't have a heated print bed on this thing, but now that I do, I, my, my material options have expanded and, and I can print with XT, I can print with NGen, I can print with NinjaFlex stock. How awesome is that? Now I need to talk about some of the things I don't like or some of the things that I think could use some improvement. And I know there's a lot of people out there that think of me as Mr. G-Max and wouldn't say anything bad about this machine, but I paid for this machine with my own money and I'm considering this an unbiased review, so I'm gonna speak my mind. And with that, there are some things that I would improve on this machine. First of all, right here, this piece rattles a little bit. Normally that wouldn't cause me too much concern, but if it's rattling for 25 hours, it's, it's kind of annoying. I put a piece of blue tape over it and that seems to have cured the rattle. And it's just this plastic insert in this metal piece that, that kind of rattles a little bit and it isn't, it isn't a perfect fit for that. And I know that's something easy that can be fixed and it doesn't seem like that, that's big of a problem, but I didn't like it. While I do like the J head, I don't like the fact that I can't get any plated nozzles for it. I don't want to run carbon fiber through this machine because it will tear through that brass nozzle most likely. In fact, on my previous G-Max, I used Form Futura carbon fiber and 300 grams on the roll was enough to tear a giant hole in my old J-head on the old G-Max and that was one of the ones I had to replace. So with this one, it's the same thing. I can't run something that requires a plated nozzle unless I upgrade to an E3D system. And I can do that and it, it will take that fairly easily, but it is added labor and it's an added cost for me in order to do that. So it's, it's a fixable problem, but it's, it's still something that I wish, I wish there was a way. I wish there was an easier way for J-Head to offer a plated nozzle or for an E3D kit to install to this with a just kind of plug and play. If you look under the print bed right here, you'll see the belt that drives the print bed. And if that belt ever gets loose or you find that you need to tighten it, you need to reach under the machine in order to do that. And normally on a other machine, they're, they're kind of small and they're easy to get to. But on the G-Max, you have to tip it up quite a ways to get under there and work on it. So you have to make sure you unload your filament before you do it. One of the things that I would improve on this machine is the ability to adjust the tightness of the belt for the Y axis without having to reach under the machine. This isn't something that should be that terribly hard to modify in the future, so I'm not too worried about it. But like I said also earlier, I've yet to tighten any belts on this and I've printed for hundreds if not thousands of hours. Finally, this spool holder. No, there's nothing wrong with it, but I don't, this isn't my favorite style of spool holder. I like it when there's a bar going through the middle and the spool can rotate on it. This is adjustable and you can adjust for certain widths of spools, but you still are tugging on the spool. And if you're moving this back and forth and the spool gets caught or, or it doesn't really move easily, it will fall off the machine. And that's what happened with my Boots Super Premium PLA. It's a very skinny roll, so it's about this tall, and when it's rolling, it's really easy to knock it off the track and fall off. Just to be fair, the Boot Super Premium PLA is the only filament I've had this happen to. The Color Fab rolls and the Protopasta cardboard rolls roll like a dream, and I have no problems with them whatsoever. I'm just telling you my preference and what's happened in the past. And now for the final thought on this machine, and as you can guess, I'm gonna recommend this machine. Let me go a little bit further. This machine is built incredibly well. I could throw this at you and it would really hurt. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna throw it at you, but the build quality is there. It's assembled incredibly well. It's very, very efficient in how it moves. It's very robust in how it moves in that it's, it's consistent in its quality over and over and over again. I firmly believe this is the large format machine to beat. I think that this machine exists in a certain class above other printers. G-Max is the printer you're going to want when you, you want to print some cosplay elements full size without having to break them up into pieces and glue them back together. For an example, let's say you want a Stormtrooper helmet. You can print it in one piece on the G-Max. It works out great. 
Yes, I know this printer isn't for everyone. It's probably not even for me sometimes. <laughs> but but it's a it is a fantastic printer. I believe it's a good value for what you get. I think it's built to last and I think it will print anything you want. Well, thanks again. Uh, I appreciate you coming along and watching this video here. It is kind of neat that this build plate is either just being announced right now or will be announced shortly. So you're the first to hear about it. Like Pikachu says, Pika Pika. Be sure to hit up gcreate.com for any up-to-date pricing info. If you thought this video was informative or you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you have any further questions or you need an answer to something that I didn't speak about. If you want to financially help the channel, you can pledge a dollar a month through Patreon right there. Otherwise, don't. I'm going to continue to do this for free as long as I can. However, the financial help does help the channel and brings about reviews like this. If you don't have the dollar a month, that's fine. Just, you know, socially high five me. And speaking of high fives, as always, high five.